In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to create this header in DV5. So when you start scrolling, you can see it gets a bit smaller and it also has this glass effect. So everything that goes behind it will be blurred. And that's just a really cool style that we can add to our header. Now, in this header, I've actually used the latest features, which are Flexbox, to come up with the way it looks right now. It looks great on mobile devices. So let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so over here, what we need to do is to first of all, head over to our theme builder. So we're just gonna come over here to Divi and then click on theme builder. Next, we're going to first of all, delete what we have here because this is what I've just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And then I'm gonna say add global header by clicking over here. Next, we're gonna say build global header. And now we have a blank slate. Now, by the way, if you haven't joined DV University yet, head over to dvuniversity.com and join the community. I mean, there's more than a thousand DV users right now. You know, this is an opportunity to hang out with like-minded people, and this is absolutely free. So go ahead and sign up. All right, so back over here. We're, the first thing we're gonna do is to click here on this plus button here, okay? So first we're gonna add one equal column. And in this column, we are going to add a group, okay? And in this group, we're gonna add a menu like that. And we're also going to add a button in here. So let's click here on this plus and then add our button module. There we go. So as you can see there, you know, side, I mean, one on top of the other. So what we need is to have them side by side. So we're gonna go into our group settings and then we're gonna use Flexbox. So we're gonna come over here to design layout. So at the moment we can see our flex direction is pointing downwards, which means it's columns. So we want to have it as a row. Now you can see they are they're actually side by side. Okay, that's great. But we don't want them like really close together. We want them like separate. So what we need is to choose this one here, which says space between, okay? So let's go ahead and select that. Now you can see everything is side by side. I know you can't see this right now, but our text here and our button is not lined up. In fact, I think you can slightly see this when I mouse over here. So what we need is to align center. Did you see that? I know it's a very slight move, but it has aligned center. All right, so now that we have this, this is a great start. The next thing we need to do is to head over here to our module settings, because this is where we need our logo to show. So we're gonna click here and then go to logo. Next, we're gonna click on insert dynamic content, and then we're gonna go to site logo. So for this to work, you need to have a logo installed, okay? Next, we're gonna come over here now to design because we really need to fix our logo size because right now it's really, really massive. So we're gonna come over here to logo, okay? And then we're gonna to go to sizing. So here we, we can start with 10 rem and see what it looks like. Oops. So it needs to be 10 rem like that. Okay, so as you can see, it's very, very small, okay? So this is where we can start nudging it here until we are happy with it. So I think 14 is great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with 14, all right? But we still have a slight problem here because our menu here is, you know, it's all the way to the left, but if this is the style that you prefer, it's okay. But let me show you what you can also do here. I'm gonna select that, and then we're gonna go into a design, okay? So in our design here, what we need to do is to, um, go to our menu text, and we are going to align this to the right, okay? So we just need to make sure that this is selected, but things are still not uh, in place properly. So what we need now is, let's head over to our sizing, okay? So in our sizing, we're gonna set this to, this width to, let's say 80%, okay? Let's see what that looks like. Excellent. So now we're at 80%, we can see that it is really close to the button. So we again, we can nudge it until it is, closer to the button like that. So we're gonna go with 86 because I want my menu text to be very, very close to the button. So that's looking great. Now we're not done yet. Now I know um, 
I also need to make sure that it looks, it's looking great on all devices. So I can see my button here is slightly massive. Now on the menu, we don't have to have a button that is really huge. So first of all, let's click on the button here and uh, let's call this login. But of course you can name your button whatever you want. And then I'm gonna come over here to design button and I'm gonna go to my button text because I need to set the size here. So I'm gonna go with one rem, okay? I know it's slightly small, but on the menu, we don't really need massive buttons. So I'm gonna go with one rem for my size here. But of course, if you want it slightly bigger, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so now that we have this, uh, it's looking much, much better. You can see now, even um, in my mobile view, the button is looking great. And it's also looking great in my um, tablet view and my mobile view. Excellent. All right, so back over here now. The next step is to make sure that um, I have um, padding that is not too much, you know, for the top and bottom. So we need to be in our section settings right now. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to go into, in fact, let's go to our background first. I need to add a background color. Okay, so let's just add a slight background color. But you notice that we have this white in the menu background, we need to get rid of that, okay? So let's just close out of here first. Let's fix this menu by clicking again on the menu settings, and then we're gonna come over here to background. We click anywhere in here, and then just drag this slider all the way down until we have full transparency. That is how we fix this, okay? Next, we need to click back on our uh, section settings. And the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we have our padding uh, set up. So we're going to go to spacing. So for padding top, I'm going to say, uh, let's try 2%. Okay. And let's bring it back down to 1%. In fact, you know what? Let's use rem instead. I'm going to say 1 rem. Okay, so the one rem is fine, but you notice that we still have padding, but this time it's in our rows. So we need to go into the rows and make sure that we zero out everything. So we're gonna come over here to spacing and on the padding top, we're gonna set this to zero and the bottom to zero as well. Now it's looking like a the proper size for our main um, header. Excellent, so let's just save this. So now that we have this, you can see here that it is not sticking to the top. In fact, let's head over here and refresh this. Okay, so now when I scroll, oops, let's clear the um, cache. And then what we also need to do is to make sure I save, exit, and then save one more time because sometimes the update doesn't go through, okay? So now I can refresh this and this should now show my main settings. So now can, you can see when I scroll, it is not sticking to the top. Now I prefer to stick to the top because sometimes someone may be scrolling here and then halfway they just wanna click away and go to something else. So this is why I prefer my headings to be, to be sticky, okay? So this is what we need to fix next. So back over here, Let's go back into our global header, okay? So with our global header selected, let's uh, select uh, the, the actual section here, okay? Like that. So what we need to do now is to head over to advanced, and then we need to go to scroll effects. So here you can see it says sticky position, do not stick. This is the default. We need to click on this drop down and make sure that we say stick to the top. There we go. Right, so that's not enough. I mean, we've stuck to the top, but perhaps we, we may want to uh, make a few changes when you scroll, like maybe make it slightly smaller. So to achieve that, you wanna click on this little button here and then go to sticky. Okay, it's very, very important you do that. So with that selected now, we're in sticky mode. We come over here to our section settings, okay? And then uh, we're going to go to our design. Hey, by the way, I have a DV course. It has a massive discount at the moment. Normally it goes for $47, but if you purchase, uh, purchase this uh, DV5 course, you can get it today for 
$27. Now, this course is fantastic because you are going to learn everything that you need to know about DV5. This is the upcoming um, page builder for elegant themes. So it's only $27. So head over, the link to that is in the video description below. All right, so over here now on our design, we're going to go to spacing. Right, so we can see here we have one rem top and bottom, okay? So we can make it slightly smaller. So we can go maybe point, let's go point 0.6, okay? Did you see that, that slight movement? So that's what we're going to have, okay? So we can now go ahead and save. But while we're in sticky mode, okay, I want you, if you want that um, glass effect on, um, on scroll, you, head over, you can head over here to advanced and then go to custom CSS, okay? What you want to do is to go to module elements and in the main element, you can paste this CSS code, okay? And then hit save. Now you wanna make sure that you get out of here by clicking on this sticky mode item and then go to desktop, okay? Now we're back to desktop. We can save this and exit, okay? Save all changes. Now what you may want to do as well is to delete all these, okay? And make sure you have the global one set. In fact, we don't need this on the 404 page. We can get rid of both of them anyway. Okay, let's save. And then what you can do now is to just uh, drag and drop it here, drag and drop it here, drag and drop it here. And pretty much you're going to have it um, on all your pages. In fact, we may need this on the search results as well and on the archive pages. Okay, now let's hit save changes. Excellent. So now that we have this all set, it's time now to check and see if this is going to work. Let's refresh this page. All right, so now let's scroll. Did you see that it, it, it was slightly smaller? Oops, that didn't work. You know why? Let's go back. Let's go back. I forgot one step. We're going to come over here to our global header. Now, the reason why it didn't work is because I did not add transparency. So we're going to come back over here to our section settings. Make sure we are in sticky mode, okay? And then in the background now, what you want to do in sticky mode, make sure that you're on sticky mode here, otherwise it won't work. We're going to come back on the color, drag it all the way down like that, okay? And then once you've done that, you can hit save. We can exit, save all changes, and then let's try and refresh this one more time. Okay, now let's see if this, if this is going to work. Excellent, now you can see it's working. We've, we've got the glass effect. Now, of course, you can adjust it if you want to. I mean, if you wanted to have more blur, it's pretty much up to you. But as you can see here, it is pretty much working okay. But if you don't care about the glass effect, you can just leave it, uh, leave it out completely. And if you also want to change the color on scroll, you can actually change the color, make it a dark uh, header. And then you can just swap these colors, make them lighter if you want to. And that is a really cool effect. The only thing that you need to remember is if you are going to uh, change the color. You want to make sure that you're on sticky mode on the scroll effect, because if you don't do that, then it won't switch the color as you are scrolling. Anyway, let me know what you think about um, this tutorial in the comments box below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments box. And also, and this is very important, if you want to support me, you can support me by buying me a coffee over here. So you just click on buy me a coffee and you can choose how many coffees you want to buy. It's five bucks a coffee. I'd really appreciate uh, if you can support me in that way. Of course, if these tutorials are helping you. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.